Hi, everybody. Welcome back and thank you for your patience. We are still on load six load shedding, so videos are done piece by piece. Right from the outset, I want to thank my daughter who surprised me and made it possible for me to watch the day of the funeral. I had to watch it on my phone, but it was better than not at all. I also want to thank Chris who had since also gifted us an inverter which will keep our Wi-Fi on so that things like this do not happen again. We were away all day yesterday, but as soon as my daughter is back, we'll install the inverter and hopefully it will help us to keep these videos coming. Okay, so now that the funeral is over, I'm a little at a loss for words. But first and foremost, I want to express my admiration for each and every person who took part in the proceedings from the pallbearers to each and every man and woman among the various divisions leading the Queen to her final resting place, to each usher showing people to their seats, absolutely everyone. It was flawless. I can only imagine the stress each one must have felt knowing the eyes of the world were upon them. Obviously, the last time I had seen anything coming Anywhere close to this was Diana's funeral, but even so, the Queen's, to me, was just more dignified, bigger, more emotional, as I would have expected it to be. Like I said, I'm at a total loss for words. All British people can, however, today be very proud of their nation, their military, their culture and heritage. I think most of you sort of have an idea as to who I am by now. Yes, I can gossip and speculate and guess along with everybody else. I get angry, frustrated and emotional. But at the end of the day, I get frustrated with the speculation, be it my own or anyone else's, as I have this thing where I want to need to, have to, know the truth. Of course, now, after the funeral, there is indeed a lot of rumour and speculation circulating and unfortunately, it is way too early to even get close to the truth. The royals are now in a seven-day period of mourning and will not be back to their duties until this coming Monday. Yes, the officers are functioning, but remember that there is a lot of winding down and winding up to do. There's also a lot of shuffling and reshuffling going on inside the royal household. And for all those working in or around or even with the royal households, it is a time of hard work and a lot of emotion and even uncertainty. I would thus, at least for the next week or two, take everything coming from a, and I'm saying this in inverted commas, royal insider with a pinch of salt. So what do I have to say regarding the death of the Queen and the funerals, which had not been said already? Not much, I'm afraid. And therefore, until I can again start asking the important questions from the right people, I'm going to give my opinion only on a number of questions I received and it mostly has to do with the future and what I think or speculate the future for the royal family will look like. Some questions though are with regards to protocol and I did do my homework and did my best to get the facts. The questions are as I received them and thus in no particular order. From TF, why did Harry not salute when they passed the senator? Neither Harry nor Andrew saluted as they were not in uniform. Like anyone else, they just bowed their heads. From SF, there are stories circulating that MM is pregnant, faking a third pregnancy or going to announce that she is pregnant. Do you think it is true? Well, 
I don't know what she'll come up with next, but I would not put it past her. Yes, they said or promised they will only have two children, but we also know that Megan made many promises she did not keep. And if she thinks that a pregnancy will be the only way to regain the spotlight, then she won't allow any previous promise to stop her. She may even quote a miscarriage and blame the stress of a funeral and alleged sadness for it. I guess we'll have to wait and see or until someone comes out of the woodwork and speak up. TF also asked whether I think Meghan Markle wore a microphone again during the walkabout and or the funeral. Well, maybe during the walkabout, but I doubt that she could have done so during the funeral. The risk of being found out would have been way too big. I do not think those lumps and bumps had anything to do with recording devices. There are many other less visible ways like spy pens and tiny devices which can be hidden in clasps and buckles and buttons. Many had asked about Megan's podcast and Harry's book. At this point, I honestly don't know. The last I heard, Megan's podcast had been delayed with six weeks, of which two had already passed. I was told that Spotify are not keen on editing the pre-recorded ones, but it may have been shuffled around a bit so that she can include something about the funeral before it becomes stale news. Will it happen? I cannot honestly say, but likely. And I'm sure we are going to hear about it soon enough. As far as Harry's book, last I heard it is still coming out in November or early December, but before Christmas anyway. I don't think there had been enough time for negotiations in the United Kingdom for him not to do so, and I do not think he will be prepared to pay back the retainer to do so. I'll contact the publisher and find out as soon as the Harkles are officially back in the United States, as I think it is pointless doing so now, as I doubt Harry had been in contact or negotiation with the publisher during the funeral process. So let's give them time to get back and settle in and be in contact with the publisher and their partners before even asking the question. At this time, I think whatever we are saying will be pure speculation. I also received questions from a number of people asking whether I thought Harry will inherit anything from the Queen. Yes, I think so, but have no idea what. Remember that there is a huge distinction between the Queen's personal wealth and assets and what she was in charge of on behalf of the state. Everything belonging to the state, namely castles, jewellery, etc., will automatically revert to King Charles and everything else will be contained in her will, of which we, mere mortals, know nothing about at least not yet. We may also never know the entire content of the Queen's will, but we'll definitely see some of the results in time. There was talk that the Queen may leave Balmoral <laughs> to Andrew, but I don't think so. If she did, which I doubt, I can see it being contested by the rest of the family in the future. The other significant property which will be in question would be Sandringham, and I have a feeling that Sandringham will go to William. I may be very wrong, as there is Edward and Anne to consider, but 
I think the queen would want it to go to the male heir to the throne so that it could be preserved for the entire extended royal family. But we don't know any of this as a fact yet. I'm told that the queen had already gifted some of her personal jewellery items to her daughter, daughters-in-law, granddaughters and granddaughters-in-law prior to her death. I was told that some of the pieces we saw Sophie, Catherine and Anne wear in the past will most likely become the permanent property. Obviously, depending on whether it was borrowed from the royal vault or whether it belonged to the Queen personally. For example, the piece Catherine wore at Westminster and later at St George's was gifted to the Queen by Japan and will thus go back to the royal vault from where it can be borrowed by anyone in the future. However, a tiara Sophie had worn before, one containing five aquamarine stones, has apparently been gifted to her long before the Queen's death. It also appears or is possible that the three string of pearls necklace, which the Queen received as a gift from her parents and was therefore her personal property, had been gifted to Catherine, the Princess of Wales, as we recently saw Catherine wear it. Other than a few pieces of which the history is well known, it will be rather difficult for us normal plebs to distinguish between the pieces belonging to the Queen and those borrowed from the vault. We can, however, confidently say that the little diamond horseshoe brooch little Charlotte wore at the funeral was a gift to her from the Queen and indeed the little one's first proper piece of jewellery. But it is also likely that there will be more which her parents will keep safely for her until she's older. I received many, many questions with regards to Harry and Meghan's relationship in the future and what I think will happen with them now after they spend an extended period in Britain and with the royal family. And I can honestly say that I am as confused as you all are. One minute, we are hearing about the epic fights between the two and the next, they appear all lovey-dovey. Many are hoping that this period with his family and being part of the procession and so on would have opened Harry's eyes and that he may be homesick and now knows what he is missing out on. But I don't think speculation is going to get us anywhere. However, I do think that the next few weeks will be significant. I think a lot will depend on what King Charles decides to do in the next few weeks. It is seriously being discussed and considered for him to remove Harry and Andrew as councillors of state and to replace them with Edward and Anne. I also heard a birdie sing that in the same letters patent, Beatrice may be removed and replaced with Catherine as guardian for George until he is 21. Now, yes, I got a lot of arguments about that one, saying that Catherine is not in the line of succession, which is obviously true. And councillors are usually the spouse of the monarch and the first four royals over the age of 21 in the line of succession. But I was reminded of something else, and that is that according to the Regency Act, Catherine can be appointed guardian, or in the case of succession, a regent, to stand in for George until he reaches the age of 18 
in terms of succession to the throne or 21 in the case of a councillor of state. According to a learned friend, Charles Cairn, and likely will, issue that letters patent in terms of the councillors of state and will likely do so in the next month to three months. No one knows for sure what King Charles plans to do with titles. <laughs> I have tried to get more information, but I was told straight out not to speculate, but rather wait as no one, and I repeat, no one knows yet. It has indeed been discussed and Charles has indeed been advised, but he has not, and I repeat, not given his final decision yet. And that, my dears, actually do come from the powers that be. So according to Buckingham Palace, and I'm not the only one being told this, King Charles will make his decision known and clear everything up in the next week or two, maybe three, following the seven days mourning period. No one, however, thinks that he will strip Harry's titles. Not yet, anyway. It is the general consensus that King Charles may be forced to eventually strip their titles. But for now, it obviously depends on Harry and Meghan's conduct in the next few months. But as of right now, no one foresees it happening anytime soon. I was told, however, that although the king has not officially informed his aides and his advisors with regards to titles for the Harkle children, everybody will be very surprised if he does decide to bestow them titles, as he has been advised against it. And the general consensus is that he won't do so at this time. That, and it was made very clear to me, that does not mean that he can't decide to do so later, but not now. An exact quote is that it would ruffle too many feathers at this time. So, my dears, we will have to wait and see. It is, however, my humble and may be even very mistaken opinion that if Harry is stripped of his councillor of state position and the children do not receive titles, that it will impact Harry and Meghan's marriage and that we may see a split in about six months. So, once again, we will have to wait and see. I personally see it as a pack of dominoes. If Meghan continues to throw shade on the royal family and Harry continues to push his book, more positions and privileges will disappear, like the Council of State position and like the possible titles for the children, one by one, until their own titles are stripped and then maybe even Harry's position in the line of succession, but it will happen gradually over a period of time and will depend on their actions and behavior in the future. So one thing, in my opinion, will be dependent on the other one. It will be like a row of dominoes. If the one falls, the next will fall, and the next will fall until there are none left. Yes, indeed, I believe that for each action of theirs, there will be a reaction from the king and or the palace. The more they lose, the sooner the marriage will deteriorate and all fall apart completely, in my opinion. So honestly, guys, that is just 
my opinion and out of respect for the royal family i'm not going to push too much at the moment or ask too much right now let's give the royals and the harkles a few days to rest and settle in one thing which has been dispelled is that megan will not have a private audience with king charles as he will likely remain in Balmoral until the weekend and will not receive visitors. And besides, from Sky News, I learned that Harry and Meghan already left Britain on Tuesday. So that also puts in question this whole story that Meghan wrote to Charles asking for a private audience. Um, from what I heard no one knows about this and it likely did not even happen. Now obviously there were a lot of questions pertaining to the children in particular and I'm just going to answer them in short. Yes, I absolutely think it was the right decision to allow George and Charlotte to attend the funeral. Yes, I agree they are young but I think there may have been some resentment from their side later had they not been there. And besides, they behaved themselves perfectly well. And from what I hear, they were well informed and educated about life and death and the whole funeral process before they were actually brought there. Okay, next one. No, I do not think it is good caring or good parenting that Harry and Meghan left their one and three year old for 18 days alone in the United States. They also lied about it saying the kids were with a nanny and Grandma Doria and no Grandma Doria was photographed walking a large brown dog near her home so she was not with the children. In my opinion, they could have flown the nanny and the babies to the United Kingdom, even though they were too small to attend events, but at least they could have gone home to them every night. But anyway, the two had now left the United Kingdom on Tuesday, so whatever will be, will be. I also guess with them now back in the United States, we'll soon see what the future holds and which way the wind will start to blow. I think for me, the days since the Queen's death only taught me one single thing. Namely, there may be a way back for Harry, but definitely not for Meghan. She is that square pig which cannot be forced into a round hole. She looked out of place. She obviously cannot and will not ever conform to royal standards and protocol. It just is what it is. It's a lost case in my humble opinion. Now, okay guys, I'll be back as soon as I can with more questions and answers and we'll post copies of the correspondence I'm sending out to get more information, um, the inquiries I'm making um, and everything else and I will bring you the news as I receive it. It is indeed a confusing and difficult time and although I love entertaining you, I prefer to do so with the truth and facts. Okay my dears, so like I said, I will be back as soon as possible and until then, please take good care of yourselves. Bye!